Well, hello there again. It's Q with YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel, Hold and Modify. And today I want to show you a little thing I've been working on. Um, this is a video involving Lightwave 3D, a little bit, um, Art Department Professional, and Fred. Now, I have made videos on all of these softwares before. If you check my playlists and my search to my videos, you will find uh, an entire video dedicated to Fred and Art Department and many videos dedicated to Lightwave. But that's not really what this is about. This is more just me kind of showing you what I've been working on. Some people wanted to see what I do, and this is some of the things I do. I load up content that I created 35 years ago and start playing with it again. Yep. So as you can see, if you're a Star Trek fan, you might recognize this as the USS Excelsior. This is the uh, NX-2000 from Star Trek um, 3 and uh, Star Trek 6. Although in Star Trek 6, it was no longer the NX-2000. It was actually no longer a prototype vehicle. Uh, I forget what its actual final badging was. Sorry, I'm not, I'm a Trek guy, but not that much of a Trek guy. Uh, anyway, I've been doing, I did two simple animations. Classic star, you know, uh, flyby of a starship here, whoosh. Um, I rendered these out, I did this angle, and then I did a, a B angle here. So you can see it there. And the reason you're seeing it is these little dots. That's because up here in the scene editor, here's the model, Excelsior. I've got it set to dots mode, which is basically points. If you try to set up the polygon mode, see if you, oops. If you, if you click through here, you can change the different modes. You can kind of see it if you squint and look. You'll see it changing modes. If you put it in the, the prettier looking polygon mode where it shows everything, it looks more like Tron. Uh, it's, way, it's way too slow. It's just way, way too slow. And you'll be sitting here forever waiting for it to update. So I like the points mode because it lets you actually see your animation much faster. And uh, yeah, I can just show you real fast what this what this looks like. I won't make you, won't make you wait. Um, this is going to look a little crunchy because I'm, I don't have the anti-aliasing, the, the pixel smoothing stuff turned on just for speed's sake. But yeah, there you go. And uh, yeah, don't laugh. That's I modeled this 35 years ago, folks. Remember, this was uh, this was before uh, CGI in television even was really starting to take off. And I was still learning the craft. And well, heck, this model helped get me hired back in the day. So, you know, I guess it is what it is, right? It's fun. I, obviously, there are better Excelsior models today, but I'm trying to stick to original content that was created on and could be created on an Amiga. I mean, obviously, you can go onto a PC or Mac and create amazing content. Trying to get that over into an Amiga, eh. So I want to try and keep my Amiga artwork, my retro pixel art of the era and on the system. But what that also means is I want to get my rendered frames that I do over to the PC and into my edit so I can put them in my YouTube videos or just post them on the Commodore Amiga Facebook group because I want everyone, you know, people to enjoy it. But I want people to see it as it was on the Amiga. And, you know, it's one of the things it's easy to say, well, you know, Lightwave can render out 24-bit images and, and then you could save out JPEGs and then you could just copy them to your your compact flash card and carry them over to your PC and make a AVI or make an MP4. It's like, of course you could. But to me, I mean, I could do that on a PC. I can render pretty 24 bit graphics all day on a PC. I wanted to show what it was like back then when you bought this computer and out of the box, you had close to broadcast quality uh, graphics. And, you know, not, I mean, we're not fooling anybody. Ham 8 is a beautiful mode. It, it, it does wonderful, wonderful things. Is it truly broadcast quality? Well, no. I mean, it's it's still kind of noisy and got some, some, some bandies and some weird issues. But it was beautiful. I mean, if you just spent all this money, you saved all of your money to get this expensive Amiga. And it's like the last thing you wanted to think about was, oh my gosh, now do I have to buy a DC TV? Do I have to buy a, a par card? Do I have to buy an RTG card to get, I mean, and, and of course, some folks who had the means did all that, but if you had your Amiga 1200 at a minimum and you slapped in a, a, a FPU RAM card into it, you were up and running with 3D graphics on your Amiga and you had a very wonderful uh, graphics chipset in there. Your GPU, if you want to call it that, was uh, uh, capable of Ham 8 or 256 colors and it was a lot to work with. So I want to take the content I render on my Amiga, make it ham eight, and then export it for PC use. Now, 
There are Ham 8 and Ham animation players in Windows, but that's clunky, and I don't, I don't want to try and bring Ham 8 animations into Final Cut through some crazy third-party plugin. What I want to do is load in my rendered frames, convert to Ham 8, and then save in a format baking in that Ham 8 look that's compatible with Windows and Mac. So I'm going to use JPEG because it's small. So one of the things you can do, like you load up your 24-bit your IFF image, and then you set Ham 8, turn on some dithering, click Execute, and there you go. There's, there's, there it is as a ham eight, a beautiful ham eight image ready to go. Now I just need to save it as a JPEG. And obviously I'm not going to do this by hand, like load, save, load, save. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's what Fred's for. So let's run over to Fred. And as you'll remember from our, my Fred video, we'll go ahead and fire up a new project and we're going to go ahead and insert a directory. Do, 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 do. We will go up to my renders folder. We will do, I um, already did A, let's do B. Click OK. It loads in all the frames. That's what it's doing right now, is loading in all those frames. And I think I had a test folder here. Let me, uh, let me verify that my test folder is no longer there before we uh, get too, too deep into this. Too deep into the woods. Lightwave, renders. So I have this export folder here. Excel, B, yeah, this test I did. But you know, always be prepared. So I'll delete those. Come back to Fred. And next thing we'll do is select all. And then we'll go to process. And we're gonna say we want to render ham and then we want to export save as a jpeg that's it that's something i have to do quick process now it fires up art department i want to do high res ham except nine over scan ntsc interlace yes nine over scan oh i clicked the wrong button see i clicked so fast that i clicked through something that was important and it said bye bye so you know what don't panic not a big deal. We can just come right back to it and say, come here, select all. Come here and say, select all. Process, and it has everything remembered. Do it again. High res, accept, non overscan, NTSC, interlace, non overscan, ham eight. Floyd dithering, because I think it looks pretty. JPEG level defaults to something terrible. We're going to set this to the max of 1000. We're going to replace the extension with question marks. That just means you get to pick what you're going to put. Except the default is JPEG. We're going to make it a little more modern and system friendly with just JPG. And we're going to say move, to, move the processed images to a new directory. Yes, because that's just for safety's sake. I don't like to mess with my source images. Lightwave, renders, export, Excel, Excel stands for Excelsior, B, click OK, create a Fred sequence, sure, sequence B, I'm going to replace it, I know I already had one there for my test, and that's it. Now it's going to go through and process every single one of those frames, it's going to load the 24-bit IFF, it's going to render it as ham 8 and deploy some Floyd Steinberg dithering, and then it's going to save it as a JPEG. And then I'll have all of those image sequences, all of those frames that I can copy into a compact flash, bring into my uh, PC, load into Final Cut, and add it to my edit and make a video. To, and then it's a video that will actually be a Ham 8 video, not a you know JPEG 24-bit video. Crazy? Yes. Let's go ahead and watch this. Uh, no, we're not going to watch it do this. I'm going to come back and we'll uh, check this out when it's done, and I'll show you a compiled animation of uh, ham awesomeness using the power of editing. Okay, and as promised, here we go. Here's the resulting animation compiled on the PC using After Effects to just do a, a simple fade in, fade out, cross dissolve. I'll let it loop a couple times so you can see. Ooh, play Star Trek sound effects. 
Okay, I'll stop doing that. Um, so one of the things you'll notice, if you look closely as it plays back, right? There, pop. There's a little bit of a sh Oh, there it goes again. It's a little bit of a shimmer. Now, you might think, well, that's just MPEG encoding. I am using H.265 to encode this. And then, of course, when I run it through Final Cut, it'll get prores and then exported to YouTube, and then YouTube will do its thing. But I will confirm that right here, tink, that little pop, tink, right there, that pop again. So what is that? That's because when I loaded up these 24-bit IFF frames in Fred slash Art Department Professional, one of the operators I forgot to do was lock the color palette. So even though Ham 8 has hundreds of thousands of colors to choose from, actually, I think millions, right? Uh, still not quite enough for the palette to sort things out. So really, when you do Ham 8, you still want to lock the color palette. And most of the time, you'll be fine, unless your scene drastically changes color shifts, like if you have some kind of rainbow crazy parade chaos thing going on. I don't know. That might freak it out. Uh, but most of the time, you can get away with locking the color palette. And you want to lock the color palette because of what, you, what, I'm, what you're seeing in this video. Right here again. Tink, pop. Tink, pop. Yeah. So that's, that's why. It's not horrible if you don't lock the palette. I mean, you can see the effect. If anything, it's kind of nostalgic, that kind of effect. But if you want to avoid that, lock the color palette, add that as an additional operator, and you won't have that problem. And every frame will look exactly the same as far as the color values go. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, video. Not as long as my normal videos, but just shows the process and shows the things I like to do uh, on my Amiga. I guess I could call this a, uh, uh, a Let's Play... Amiga 3D video, let's play light wave, let's play long play light wave art department professional, I should stop recording now, bye.